Hello, Tomok YouTube here with my full in-depth review of the Poker 3, which I've had the privilege of using for the last few weeks. If you haven't already seen my video on the unboxing and first impressions, I made a link down in the description. The Poker 3 comes in this beautiful yet simple box. Just says Poker 3 on the top, Vortex on the front. And inside, we find that there's bubbling packaging, which was not popped when I received it. And inside there, there is this cardboard case, which surrounds the keyboard. And it has a little sleeve that came around the keyboard. I turned this into a carrying case for the keyboard that I slide into my backpack. And I slid the little sleeve in there to help protect the keycaps from being up, from uh, scratching. But... I'm looking for a more permanent solution as you can see this is already falling apart in there but I just attached a little piece of industrial velcro and it works pretty well for the last few weeks. Also inside the box we find a USB-A to micro B connector, the same one you'll find on most Android phones. It is not braided but it is very high quality rubber. The only thing is there are markings in gray on the cable which is kind of hard to see on camera but it would have been kind of nice if they would have made it an all white cable instead of having those markings. Next let's go into a physical overview of the product. On the front we can see the first sign of that aluminum case, the bottom of the genuine Cherry MX switches, which in this case are Cherry MX clears. And also one thing I've noticed is that the bottom of the keycaps are rather sharp. I wish they would have rounded the bottoms, but that's really being a critic because you don't spend that much time on the bottom of the keycaps. On the right side we can see that this keyboard while it does not have feet to flip up on the bottom it has a slant to the case. I actually really like this because it gives you about a quarter inch higher in the back than it does in the front and I find that the feet tend to raise the keyboard too much but when you don't have the feet up the keyboard is way too flat so this is a really nice compromise and I don't find myself missing the feet at all. On the back we can see where that cable plugs in and one thing I've noticed so on the back of the keycaps, you can see that they're little bumps. And that is where I'm guessing the keycaps were attached during manufacturing and then they broke those connections and put them on the keyboard. I wish that if they're going to go through all the work of making PBT keycaps, they would just sand the back of them. However, once again, not a big deal. Don't spend that much time in the back of the keycaps. And then also you can see on this backspace key, there are little two orange pieces. Those are the stabilizers, which are much, much nicer than the standard wire stabilizers that are on most keyboards. They're on every larger than usual key on this keyboard. Then moving on to the other side, we can see that same slant. On the bottom of the keyboard, we can see four very nice rubber feet that have not shown any signs of coming off during my testing. And then we can see a nice aluminum manufacturing plate with your serial number, the model name, and it says made in Taiwan. And then we can see that there are four dip switches on the back of the keyboard. The first two change your layout between QWERTY, Dvorak, and Colmac. The third one changes your caps lock to a function modifier. And the fourth one allows you to change your function keys to anywhere else on the keyboard. Now we can move on to the top of the keyboard, which is probably what you're most interested in. We can see that we have PBT keycaps, which are very nice. The only problem with them is they are laser etched, meaning they will wear off over time. It's a little disappointing to see that they went through all the work of putting PBT keycaps on and didn't make them double shot, but that would have added additional price to the keyboard. So, can't really complain too much there, other than later down the line you may want to purchase PBT keycaps because these will wear out and if that bothers you it's good to keep that in mind. On this particular keyboard we have white with a gray font It's because I ordered the white model. If you order the black model it will have a brown font which is not as ugly as it sounds. It actually looks quite nice and I really like the keyboard's text. It's nice and simple and it goes along with the general aesthetic of the keyboard. For example you can see that Windows key instead of having a Windows symbol it just says WIN just to keep it nice and simple. One thing that I have noticed and a few other people have noticed on the internet is that all these function modifiers are lower left justified like they have the text in the lower left hand corner. 
all the letters are top left, which is all fine and good, but then for whatever reason, the escape key is centered. So, just a little, seems like a little oversight right there, but it's not too big of a deal. I would have never noticed that unless somebody had pointed it out to me. We can also see that there are a function key and a program key, P and key, meaning there's no Windows key on the right side, but most people use only use the Windows key on the left side. And these are both used for programming the keyboard. Now the typing ex gaming experience of this keyboard really comes down to the switches you order. Because there's no flex in the back plate, and these I really like these keycaps, they're nice and short, you're not going to find any problems there. But, you know, whatever switch you choose depends on well your taste and it'll change how you like the typing and gaming. Personally I ordered Cherry MX Clears, very fond of them for typing, don't like them for gaming as I really am bothered by tactile switches in gaming. I really want that nice linear switch. But for typing I really like the Cherry MX Clears. This keyboard is also available in reds, blacks, browns, clears, blues, and greens. So any f major flavor of Cherry MX Switch and it is on this keyboard. And I really like, like I mentioned just a second ago, these short, what I believe to be cherry profile keycaps. And even though it doesn't have a wrist rest, it's not really a problem because it's so short. Your wrist can just kind of sit near the table and you can type away. It's, I've not missed the wrist rest once while using this keyboard. And when I use other keyboards, if it doesn't have a wrist rest, it really bothers me. And this one just being a little bit lower really helps. And then, uh, one more thing on the typing on the keyboard is overall, I think it is one of the best typing experience you're going to have on a keyboard, one of the best gaming experience you're going to have on a keyboard due to the size. And that means you can have your keyboard and your mouse closer together and still have easy typing experience. It's very sturdy. You could hit somebody over the head with this, bam, and it would come out the winner. Now let's go into the programming of this keyboard, which is one of its main selling features. And there's four layers, which you can access with the by pressing function M less than greater than a question mark. And that changes between default, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4. And it is when it is plugged in, a light will come on under the keyboard, telling you what layer you're on. And you can program layers 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, and 4. And there is a very nice manual on how to do this on Vortex's webpage. In order to program the keyboard, you first select your layer. So if I wanted to program layer 2, I click FN less than. And then I'd go function, right control. Press the key I want to program. I want to program the W key. I'm going to click W. And I'll type in what I want to type, what I want it to do. I'll type in hello world, exclamation point. And when I'm done, I go function, right control. And that is now saved on that key on that layer. However, when I didn't find myself using it that much as you have to be on that specific layer to use that binding, which made sense to me. But the problem is that meant your light had to be on. And having the light on while I was typing really bothered me. So I didn't actually use the programming at all because it wasn't. I didn't find it cost of, not cost effective, time effective to switch layers just to use that binding. And I, I would have just been better off typing in the command myself. And I wish there was a way to set on uh, the light not to turn on on the alternate layers. If any of you figure that out, please tell me because I'd be very interested. And that really limits its functionality as having that light on will bother a lot of people, myself included. Now, I have some other comments on the keyboard. It, for me, it would have been nice to have the micro USB plug-in on the left side instead of the top because I found myself in a few limited desk space scenarios where I wanted to use a laptop. For example, I have my laptop up there, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the keyboard just to show you what I'm talking about. And because it sticks out the top, that's how close I can get them together. But say it went into the left side, I could get them right up against each other and save just that little amount of desk space. However, there are enough left-handed mousers out there that would, that would create some problems, so I understand why they didn't do that. But maybe a solution would have been to offer like a right angle adapter, that way you could either plug it in straight into the back, or plug it in to an adapter that makes it go out at a right angle, that way you can get them just that little bit closer. But that's really nitpicking at this point. 
The other thing is the IJKL being the arrow keys when you have the function key down is a little awkward. On the previous poker keyboards, they've had them on WASD, which made a lot more sense to me because if I use uh, arrow keys for going down the web pages when I have dedicated ones, and I didn't find myself doing that on this keyboard because it was so awkward to either click the function key with the right hand and try to use just one finger to change between them or come all the way over. And it also took a lot of time to click the function key and move my left hand all the way over. It would have been nice just to have it on WSD, function, press those keys. You could rebind this other than I don't want to have the backlight on and the alternate modes. So comes back to having that backlight on bothering me. The other thing that would have been nice is if they would manufacture a carrying case for this keyboard because a lot of the carrying cases out there are a little small, don't quite a little big, they don't quite fit this keyboard right. And I think Vortex would have a very big audience if they sold one for this keyboard. In the conclusion of this keyboard, it has great build quality. The key caps are PBT and having that aluminum case in those PBT keycaps for the price of $120 to $135 is absolute steal because K, uh, P, nice PBT keycaps set you back $30 or more and a keyboard case of this quality will set you back $60 all the way up to $100 there's even cases that cost as much as this keyboard so having those two features alone is just makes this keyboard absolute steal the form factor is amazing in my opinion saves so much desk space. I can fit my phone on my desk, I can fit my camera on the desk. I could almost fit two of these keyboards in one full size Unicomp Ultra Classic. So that gives you so much more desk space over a full size keyboard. I love the keyboard font and it's fully programmable except for the few keys like the function, the PN, and the layer buttons, the M less than greater than question mark. The cons, the backlit model not available yet, but that should be coming out soon. So if you if you want that backlit model, just wait. Warning, I don't think it's coming with PBT keycaps, as most backlit models do not. But Vortex does manufacture some PBT backlit keycaps, key which I believe are the only ones in the market. So they might slap those on the Poker 3 backlit, which would be very nice. The LEDs on different layers really bothers me. Tell me if you figure out a way to turn that off. Maybe like if they included a fifth dip switch to turn those LEDs off. The laser etched keycaps, that doesn't really make sense to me. You go through all this work making these nice keycaps, and then you don't even make them so they'll really last. I don't know. Then again, I haven't had any wearing down over my past few weeks, so maybe they're very nice, very deeply laser, laser etched. I'm not quite sure how that will wear down over time. I'll post an update video if it gets too worn down. And the form factor could also be a con because if you do a lot of number crunching, you need that numpad. However, I've seen people use this keyboard in a dedicated numpad, so they still get that desk savings, still get that mouse close to the keyboard, but then can have another numpad over to the right of the mouse, so you get best of both worlds. Overall, this is the high quality 60% keyboard that most people are looking for. It's at an astounding price, $120 to $135. Not particularly cheap, but for all the features you're getting, it's a very nice keyboard. Thanks for tuning into my video. Please like or dislike and explain in the comments section why you did so. I'm open for video suggestions and constructive criticism. Subscribe if you would like to see more tech-related content from me. Thank you.